Hello students, in this video we'll see examples of computing first order partial derivatives and second order partial derivatives. Let's consider this function, f of xy, which is the sine of xy over x. Let's find all first order partials and mixed partials and mixed second order partials. Okay, so let's start. So partial f partial x will require us to hold y as a constant and use the quotient rule. So I'm going to do the bottom x times the derivative of the top. The derivative of sine is cosine of xy. And the derivative of xy with respect to x is going to be a y. Then I do minus the top, sine of xy, times the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of x with respect to x is just going to be a 1. All divided by the bottom squared. Good. Let's compute partial f partial y. Partial f partial y is the partial with respect to y of, well, we're going to have the sine of xy, that's our function, all divided by x. Now with respect to y, with respect to y, we're treating what? We're really treating x as a constant. So this x in the denominator is a constant, so I can pull it out. This is 1 over x, a constant, partial, partial y of the sine of xy. So this is going to be 1 over x, derivative of the sine is cosine, cosine of x times y. The derivative of x times y with respect to y is x, and now the x will cancel out because I have an x and a 1 over x, so I just get cosine of xy. Now notice that the x derivative and the y derivative are very different functions. The x derivative is fairly complex. The y derivative is fairly simple. Let's compute the mixed partial derivatives, which is partial f partial x partial y and partial f partial y partial x, and see how they relate. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to compute partial squared f, and I'm going to do the y derivative of the x derivative. So in other words, I'm going to do the y derivative of the x derivative, and that is the y derivative of this expression over here, of x times y, x times y, cosine of xy, minus the sine of xy, all over x squared. Now again, with respect to y, x squared is a constant. So I'm going to pull that 1 over x squared out, and now I'm going to do the differentiation. So I'm going to have this first function over here and this second function over here. So it's going to be the first function times the derivative of the second function. That's going to be an x times y times negative sine of xy, because that's the derivative of cosine. And then times what? Times the derivative of x times y with respect to y. That will be x. Then I do the second function, cosine of xy, times the derivative of the first function. The derivative of xy with respect to y is going to be an x. Then I have to do the derivative of sine of xy with respect to y. That's going to be a negative cosine of xy. And then I have to do the derivative of xy with respect to y. That's going to be an x. Now look what happened over here. These last two terms, this cosine of xy times x and this negative cosine of xy times x are going to cancel out. And we're left with, well, let's simplify this. I'm going to have an x and an x, that's x squared. Oh, but there's an x squared in the denominator. That will cancel with both those x's. And it looks like I'm just left with what? I'm just left with negative sine y times y. So this whole expression over here will be equal to negative sine of xy times y. That is partial squared f, partial x, partial y. Next, let's compute the easier derivative partial squared f partial x partial y. This is the x derivative of the y derivative. So for this example, the x derivative of the y derivative will be the x derivative of cosine of xy with respect to x. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so negative sine of xy. And then the derivative of xy with respect to x is y. So lo and behold, if we look carefully, we see that our 
partial squared f, partial y, partial x, and our partial squared f, partial x, partial y are exactly the same function, right? Even for this complex example, I get the same function. And this tells us, this gives us at least evidence of the fact of something that is true in general. Namely, as a fact, and this is either Euler's theorem or Clairaut's theorem, depending on what book you're using, what reference you're using, asserts that partial squared f, partial x, partial y is partial squared f, partial y, partial x. And even a higher generalization version of this Euler or Clairaut theorem states that only the number of partial derivatives you do matters. So for example, you could do something like this. You could say the fifth derivative of f with respect to x with respect to y with respect to x with respect to y with respect to x. So I have a total of three x derivatives and two y derivatives. This is also the same thing as partial squared f, partial y, partial x, partial y, partial x squared, because I still have three x derivatives and two y derivatives. It's also the same as partial to the fifth, that should be a fifth, not partial squared, that's a fifth x, partial to the fifth f, and then partial, I could do partial y squared, partial x cubed. All three of those derivatives are going to give me the same thing because they have the right number of each of the corresponding variables that I'm differentiating. Thank you very much.